All right, welcome to first class of CSI 41. Thankfully, this is the second time I've recorded it because the first time I recorded it, I had two microphones recording at the same time and I got this really unbearable echo on it. So I'm currently re-recording this and uh, hopefully it'll turn out a little bit better this time. So greetings everyone, my name is Bill Kearney. I am a computer science professor here at Columbus Community College and this is Computer Science 41 online. Computer Science 41 is um, it's a really important class. And, and if you're a computer science major, this should be the center point of like your lower division education. Like this is, this is the class where you finish learning programming. The first part of programming was CSI 40. This is the second half. And you really need to buckle down and dedicate yourself. And if there's any gaps in your knowledge, uh, you need to fix those gaps and we'll we'll talk more about different ways we have of doing that in the near future so again my name is bill kearney i've been teaching here since 2015. we've got a ta his name is nick muya he works in the tutorial center and he will be online during our class hours our class hours are 12 to 1 30 monday wednesday friday and he's also just around the discord server at random times as am i um uh, one of the, uh, you know, I, I have office hours from 11 to 12 every day, but in all honesty, just send me a message on Discord anytime. It's 1.30 in the morning right now when I'm recording this because I've been working on prepping all my other classes uh, starting tomorrow. And that's normal for me. <laughs> so uh, feel free to just message me whenever you want. We also have a help center on Discord and you can ask questions about the homework on there anytime you want. We have a really good support system for you guys. In addition, we got a guy named Nate Beal. He's a senior. He's a graduating senior at CSUMB, CSU Monterey Bay. And he is doing a service project this semester. And his service project is basically to help you guys out. So he is going to volunteer five hours a week helping you guys. So that's really cool, too. I'm not paying him nothing. I'm just going to sign a document saying he did it. But that's a really cool thing that he's doing. So if you see Nate Beal, the usurped king online, uh, cinema you know, clap emoji or something like that. And also we've got a pretty good um, cast of experienced students. One of the really nice things about Clovis Community College is that the more ex experienced students help out with the least and, and lesser experienced students. So if you post a question on the Help Center, it's quite likely that, you know, a second year or a third year or fourth year, because they, a lot of our alumni stay on here as well to answer questions, will jump on and answer your question for you. So we, we've got a really good support network for you. Okay, so most important thing in this class is you must join Discord. You must join Discord. This is mandatory. So there is a link here. Uh, this is in the files section, by the way, if you ever want to find my presentations, they're all in the files section on Canvas. You can get to it through uh, the modules section as well. You should probably get into the habit of checking the modules section on Canvas. Every lecture I make, every quiz, every assignment, all of them go up on the module section, sorted by week. So get into the habit of checking it daily. Okay, so you must be on Discord. And so there's two there's two areas of Discord that you will use most. I mean, I guess you could use the memes section. <laughs> yeah, I know I do. But the, the two sections you will use the most are the CSI 41 lecture room and the CSI 41 help center. So the lecture room is open during lecture, which is noon to 1.30, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And the help center is open the rest of the time. So the lecture room closes down off hours and the help center is open the rest of the time. And you can post questions basically 24 seven there. It's a really good resource to have. And uh, incidentally, uh, we also have a tutorial center on campus. The tutorial center has computer science TAs. You can, um, on the modules page on Canvas, there's a link to get the tutorial center. You can probably find it through the school website too. And you can make an appointment with the tutorial center and get help there as well. So uh, one of the things we are doing differently this semester, I've, I've been really thinking about what it, what it takes to have success online. And uh, online learning kind of feels like this sometimes. I don't know if you've ever played Fallout New Vegas, but it kind of feels like Fallout New Vegas. Giant barren stretches of the Nevada desert. Death claws, a burnt car, nobody for miles around. 
you just sort of feel like you're out in the wasteland. Okay. And so one of the things I'm really going to focus on hard this semester is interaction, having you be aware of your fellow classmates in class, communicate with me, communicate during lecture time, ask questions outside of lecture time and the help center. I really want to have people interacting with each other because I feel it's really important to a good education. So different for this semester than in semesters past. If you've had me before, if you haven't, well, it's different. <laughs> so there are uh, two things that I am going to do to encourage this interaction. The first is, the first is you must talk on Discord every day, daily. You must daily participate on Discord, and daily means Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right? So you have uh, basically Monday or Tuesday, right? So if you can't make the lecture time, then the recordings will go up later in the day, and you have to watch the, the lecture and respond to it, ask a question about it in the Help Center. Or if you're live during the lecture recordings, just chat on Discord. Uh, one really important thing, make sure your Discord username has your last name in it. That's how we give you the points for this. So if your username is CheetoFan99, whatever, um, we don't know who you are. Okay. So make sure at least your last name is in um, your Discord username. Lectures are going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you talk online during the lecture, it automatically counts you there for the participation grade. If you're not there during the lecture, ask a question about the lecture in the help center. Trust me, there will be questions. You will have questions. It's a, this is a big class. Like it's, there's a lot of topics we go over. It's a great class. It's an important class, but you know, some things you're going to want to know more about. Everybody's going to have a question. So I don't feel that's too onerous. It's a letter grade. It's a free letter grade. Just participate. You get a free letter grade. Okay. The second thing is there will be a daily quiz. So after every lecture goes up, I will post a quiz. There's no quiz today. Uh, I'll talk about what we have instead of a quiz today. It's an assessment test uh, uh, in a little bit. But basically, after every lecture, I will put up a quiz. It's usually one question or two questions, or one or two points, um, assessing to see if you learned the material from the lecture. So it's kind of like, did you pay attention while in class? And uh, the the participation is basically a gimme. Like as long as you just chat, it's it's not graded. You just, as long as you say something, you're going to get points for it. It's a free letter grade. For the quiz, you have to get it right. So it's not it's not they're not designed to be hard, but at the same time. Um, if you don't understand something, you'll get it wrong, but that's actually really good. If you get the daily quizzes wrong, that's a, a giant signal to you. Like, oh, I need to understand that better. Okay. And, and so the questions that I ask on the quizzes are the kinds of questions I ask on the big exams. Okay. And so if you don't understand something, go on to the help center and ask a question. Okay. Uh, it, that's a way for you to immediately get feedback on if you understand something or not. And, and in this class, you have to be really on top of the ball. You have to be like, oh, I don't understand what it means to sort a vector from the beginning to the end. Uh, you know, I, I'm not familiar with that. What, what does that mean? Ask a question on the help center. It's pretty easy. And people will help you. We have a lot of help for you guys. I have, I have called in favors from people around the country to come online on Discord and help you guys. Because we don't have that face-to-face -face interaction that we do. Normally, normally I can just walk around a class and see who's staring at a computer screen, not typing anything online. I don't know, right? And so I really want that interaction to take place. Okay, so here's your grades uh, for the semester. Uh, I don't care about grades, incidentally. Um, I know you guys care about grades, and so I care about grades because you guys care about grades, but I don't care about grades. What my goal is, like what I want from you guys is for you to understand the material. I want you guys to be able to code your way out of a wet paper bag. That's what I really want. If somebody says, hey, I've got this problem, you'd be like, oh, I, can, I, can probably, I can probably solve that. You know, That's what I want, uh, competency. I want people to come out of this class knowing how to program. And like I said, right now, you're halfway through your computer science programming career. This is the second half. It's one year to learn to code, basically. And you're halfway through, and I want you by the end of this year to be competent, to be, to be good at it to increase your fluency, so to speak. It's like I'm taking, a, I took first semester Japanese a year ago. 
thing about taking second semester Japanese, probably not at this point. I don't know. I kind of want to, and I kind of don't want to, but I really need to take second semester Japanese so I can get my fluency. I, I was thinking about how do I say this? How do I say that in Japanese? And I just don't have any fluency. I need to practice it. Fortunately, I have a friend in Japan that I can practice a little bit with, but it's just not the same as taking a class. So, okay. So daily, daily participation, full letter grade. Daily quizzes, full letter grade. Programming assignments, 50% of your grade. I'm, I'm really going strong this semester on you guys coding, you guys writing programs, you guys solving problems. I really don't want to see anybody not doing a programming assignment. So I raised the point value because I noticed at the end of last semester, there were a number of students who were just kind of like punching, you know, numbers into their grades and be like, ah, if I just don't do any of the remaining homework assignments, I'll still get a C. And so I raised the point value of the programming assignments because that's what I really want to see you guys do. 30% will be you on your own. 20% will be you with a partner. And one of the big topics we're going to talk about this semester is how do you code with somebody else? Big, big topic, really important topic. Very few people code on their lonesome these days. And so I've already had people messaging me like, do I have to really work with a partner? Yeah, <laughs> that's a skill. It's a skill. Like I know you don't want to, it's a skill, right? It's not easier. <laughs> it's not easier to work with a partner usually. It's usually harder, uh, but that's a skill. It's a, it's, a, it's a very, very important skill. Like how do you collaborate with other people? Because everybody is like everybody. In, I mean, not everybody, but like everybody. You know, if you get to work at Microsoft, you're going to be on a team of five to seven programmers. You're going to have a Slack channel. You're going to be all coding and talking to each other on Slack. I mean, that is you're checking code in, you're checking code out. Like that's the lifestyle. You know, the programming lifestyle is very social, contrary to stereotype. <laughs> contrary to stereotype, you actually work with other people and talk to other people. Okay, 10% of your grade is going to be Zybooks. If you've had Zybooks before, good news. There is no programming on Zybooks. The Zybooks people have never gotten their act together and put together programming assignments for the second semester textbook. So there's no programming. You just have to read the chapters that I assigned to you. And that's it. You get points. Yay. So uh, Zybooks, if you haven't done Zybooks before, it's an interactive textbook. It has illustrations that move around and show pointers moving and values filling in and all this stuff. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's like really neat, but it's neat. Scale, scale back that uh, excitement a little bit. I, I like it better than normal textbooks. And uh, every, every time in the past where I've asked students, they preferred it to, uh, to, to paper textbooks. It's not cheap, but it's cheaper than paper textbooks. That's for sure. So that's a letter grade. Now, all you have to do is just read it. Like, it's not onerous. It's not even that long because there's no problem. Just read the sections it takes. 15 minutes a week, uh, 20 minutes. I don't know. I don't know how fast you read. Maybe 10 hours. I don't know. It shouldn't be. And then finally, there's these things called competency exams. So I have ditched, um, I have ditched midterms and finals. So this is something I tried last semester and they worked out really well. As it turned out, the competency exams predicted success on programming assignments better than one of my favorite things, which is code reviews. Code reviews involves pulling up a student's code and going through it and asking questions about it. I think that just works a lot better in person than online, to be honest. And so I scrapped code reviews. Code reviews had the lowest correlation with success. Competency exams are the highest. So we're doing competency exams again. I look at data. I, I change this class every semester, you know, and I try and figure out what works, what doesn't work and, you know, keep at it. Keep on honing my craft. So competency exams. So what that means is after we finish a topic, like we finish learning about classes, then I post a short midterm. It's not really a midterm. It's like four questions. It's just this big, not 30 questions, like that big. It takes half an hour to an hour to do. And it sees if you know the topic. And if you know the topic, congratulations, you passed. You get 100%. If you don't know the topic, then you get to take it again. It's low stakes. I'm, I'm a firm believer in not killing my students. I don't want you guys stressed out or anxious. And so if you fail a competency exam, cool, you can take it a second time, no big deal. And if you fail that one, then you can take it a third time, but you have to go into the tutorial center first. So, because I figure like, if you're just gonna just sit there and re-roll a bunch of times, you know, it's not good, it's not good. And so if you fail it twice, then you have to go into the tutorial center, 
the, and meet with the tutor and the tutor will explain the topic. Okay, let's go over classes again. They'll go over it with you for an hour. And then you can, and then the tutor will give you a passcode or I'll give you the passcode one or the other. And it'll unlock the third try on it. And in theory, there could even be a fourth try. If you fail it three times, you could do it a fourth time. But nobody failed it three times and wanted it. A, like either nobody failed it three times or nobody who failed it three times wanted to force shot at it. So one way or the other, not a single time last semester. And I had a fourth competence exam prepared. Nobody ever took it the entire semester on any of the competence exams. So we'll just say three tries. And if it comes up that somebody wants a fourth, more power to you. I'll put one together. Not it. Like I said, I don't care about grades. I care about you learning. I really want you guys to learn the material. It's really, really important. Most of the people in this class are computer science majors. All right. And if you're not, then you're interested in computer science. And, you know, and so this class is really important. Like you cannot get through um, your computer science career if you have any gaps in your knowledge. You have to learn the material. And it's very, very important. Probably the most important class, honestly, in terms of job interviews and just learning to program in general. Okay. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's not a hard class, but it's hard <laughs> because it takes effort. It takes work. You know, you have to be programming every week and you have to be working on it. And if you don't know something, you have to ask for help. Like you have to work at it. It's not hard per se, but it will require sustained effort over time, which is something that <laughs> some people have trouble with. My daughter got halfway through a fractions worksheet today and then quit. She ran out of motivation on it. She just went face down on the table. Didn't want to do fractions anymore. And uh, considering, and yeah, it's a little, bit of a spoiler for later on. Your first program assignment is going to be fractions because my daughter's doing fractions. So you guys are going to do fractions too. Hope you remember how to reduce fractions and add and subtract fractions because that's your first program assignment. It's not designed to be hard, but it is going to make you think a little bit. You're going to feel like smoke's coming out of your ears. You feel like your brain's melting a little bit because, you know, a lot of you guys haven't done fractions since you know, you're eight. <laughs> right? I just convert them to decimals, right? These fractions. So we'll talk about that more. Okay. So this is the class rhythm. So you're going to get into a rhythm in this class. Okay. And there's a very definite rhythm to the class. Every day, and by every day, I mean Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So three times a week. Lecture. Take the quiz on the lecture. Say something on Discord. Okay. That's the rhythm. Every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, noon to 1.30, noon to 1.30, noon to 1.30. Lecture. Just say something during the lecture, got that covered. Take the quiz after the lecture, done. That Just get into that rhythm of participating, of watching every day. What what I found a problem was last semester is that I watched the um, engagement, you know what you'd call it on YouTube, the engagement level. And so I would see the number of people watching the videos went like this by about... I don't know, like Thanksgiving, like prior to Thanksgiving, probably there's just you, you, like, you see people, they're doing the class and it's like, ah, you know, so I want you guys just to get into the habit and I'm motivating you guys to watch the lectures and take the quizzes and participate in class. Just get into the habit of it. We're a good group of people here. We, we have a very positive attitude on here. So talk to people, make friends, you, you know, and invite them to play video games with you. You know, we've got a gaming channel on it. There's nothing wrong with video games. I teach video games too. If you want to take video game development, IS 50A starts tomorrow. It's every Tuesday, Thursday at 2.30. Sign up for it. It's a fun class. Making video games is fun. I would honestly, though, take it after... No, yeah, no, you could probably take it now. Yeah, probably take it now if you want. Or you can take it in the summer. I teach it in the summer, too. It's a little bit more fun in the summer because you just focus on it. Okay, once a week, there will be a programming assignment and there will be a textbook. So, daily... Watch lecture, talk during the lecture. I am a professor that wants you to talk during the lecture. Take a quiz once a week, one programming assignment, one textbook read. And that's the rhythm. The days that the things might be due, I'm going to try and keep them constant. But the way that things work is there's like holidays, like like next Monday, we don't have class already. It's like for one weekend, you get a holiday. So um, deadlines might move around, but I'm going to try to keep the deadlines as consistent as possible because that helps students when there's a consistent deadline. And then finally, every month or so, it depends whenever we finish a the topic, there's gonna to be a competency exam. So when we finish classes, there's gonna be a competency exam. When we finish, you know, whatever linked lists or vectors or whatever, there's gonna be a competency exam. And these will take place periodically through the semester. Okay. And so just get into that rhythm. 
Okay, so in this class, you're going to finish learning C++. Um, C++, by the way, is a giant language. So you're not really going to finish learning it. But you, it's more like you're going to finish learning what you need to know, right? You're going to finish the important bits. And then if there's something you don't know, like, well, I want to research, you know, uh, uh, steady clock versus high resolution timer and figure out the difference between that when I'm timing my code, more power to you, you know, and you'll know how to do that after this class. But um, this class will teach you by the time you finish, you'll know the important bits of C++. Uh, this, the second bullet point here, uh, oh, and, and we're going to learn object-oriented programming, which is a different way of programming. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that um, when I go over there. Um, it's a different way of programming from in CSI 40. So there's a CSI 40 way of programming. There's a CSI 41 way of programming. Sometimes one's better. Sometimes the other's better. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, a purist. Um, I program either way. Okay. Uh, this second bullet point though, that's really important. And that's something my professors didn't really teach me very much either. And uh, much to my de detriment. Uh, the standard library in C++ has done a hell of a lot of things for you. A hell of a lot of things for you. If you want to sort an array, it's done. Don't write it yourself. One of the biggest mistakes I see new programmers make is they're like, oh, there's this thing, like, I need to sort this vector. Okay, I'm just going to write bubble sort. And they, they write bubble sort, and it doesn't really work, or it doesn't work if you have negative numbers, and they sit there and spend days, and, and it's really slow. There's sort in the standard library. Just call sort. Call sort. Done. I don't think I've written, I mean, I have written my own sort programs because I teach computer science and I kind of walk students through how heap sort works and merge sort works and things like that. But in practice, like I don't write my own sort routines. I call sort. It's fast enough. Like if I, if I really needed something crazy fast, you know, maybe I would, but eh, it's, it's probably faster than what I can write anyway. So. What if you want to shuffle a vector? You know, you got a vector of things and you want to shuffle them like you have a deck of cards, you want to shuffle it. You could write your own shuffling algorithm, but I wouldn't. I would call random shuffle. There's a there's an algorithm for that. What if you want to get the current time? There's an algorithm for that. What if you want to, you know, read a mouse? There's no function for that, actually. Because C++ has no concept of a mouse. It's the year 2021. And we still don't really have networking or graphics or mouse support in C++. But, you know, pretty much everything else is done. Yeah. And there's, there's second-hand library. There's second-party, third-party libraries that do that kind of stuff. But as part of the standard library itself, it does a hell of a lot of stuff for you. And so learning what's in there will make you a much better programmer. If you know what's in the standard library, your programming speed will go up by, like, an order of magnitude. You'll be 10 times faster. Because instead of having to write all this stuff yourself, you're like, oh, yeah, it's in the standard library. I'll just call that. Done. If I want to find the biggest element in a vector, call max element. Done. If I want to erase something from a vector, call erase. Done. You know, like instead of having to write all this stuff yourself, it's called the standard library stuff. Why okay. code something that's been done for you? Uh, you're going to learn how to uh, collaborate. That's really important. We're going to learn Git, GitHub. And uh, for those of you that are more Windowsy people, uh, you can use Visual Studio Code, uh, Live Share, and collaborate on code together. For the first programming assignment, which is a partnered assignment, we're not going to go into that. Um, there's enough on the fir first week, trust me, as it is. But this is something you're going to learn. And it's really important. It's really important to learn how to, to collaborate with people on code. And especially now that you're online and remote, it's a really good opportunity. And then finally, you're going to get good. You're going to get good at programming. Right. I got my first job after taking CSI 41. I mean, my class was called CSE 10 and CSE 12 at UC San Diego. Same class. Same class. So I took it and got a job. And maybe you could too. I don't know. This may be an internship. Okay. Um, prep you for jobs. You'll get experience doing real world assignments. It's good stuff. But really, this is this is what we're doing here. So what we're doing in this class really is just powering you up. We're here to we're here to power you up. We're here to just increase your power level in programming exponentially. That's the goal. To go from CSI 40, where you've just learned the basics of like if statements and for loops and functions and and learn how to put them together and integrate them and build bigger and bigger projects and things like that. So you just want to just gather your strength and, and level up. So it's fun. It's a fun feeling. Yeah. 
Is computer science hard? Um, can be, can be. The um, you know, the the sad reality is like I'll have like one of my students actually just told me he's gotten a job at Berkeley, a job, not a student. He's working there, doing programming. It's pretty cool. He just told me last night, and he worked hard, and um, he's now he went to UC Irvine and graduated, and is now at Berkeley. Uh, and then I've had other students that have gone somewhere and they didn't know who to ask for help and they failed and they dropped out. And, and I think really the big difference is learning how to fail. Like a lot of, especially good students, good students don't know how to fail. They don't know how to fail. Uh, cause they're just used to just acing classes and they're not used to that feeling of like, I don't know how to solve this, you know, or like, I know there's gotta be a function to like read a value from a web page, but I don't know how to do that. You know, how do I do that? You know, and they don't know, they don't know how to fail. And so, uh, you know, basically if you fail a little bit, that's actually really good for you. It's actually a good experience to like not have everything come easy to you. Have a little bit of resistance training, you know, like in working out. And, um, and when you struggle at something and you succeed, it feels good and you learn. Okay. But you don't want to get stuck. That's the, the big thing is like, you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're supposed to do. The deadline's coming up and it, just nothing gets turned in. That's the big risk. And so what you need to do is get into the habit of starting a assignment early, like start today on the programming summit, see how far you can go. And if you get stuck, you've got a couple days of slack time where you can ask for help. So, um, it's good to struggle and succeed. It's bad to get stuck. If you get, if you get stuck, you have to have somebody else somebody else unstick you. But fortunately we've got me, we've got the TA, we got Nate BLDU Super King, we got the tutorial center, we got a bunch of experienced students all willing to volunteer to help you. So uh, there's a lot of people that will get you unstuck. You just need to ask for help, okay? So that's good. She's uh, working hard. Uh, she's working on, she's got giant pieces of bread next to her. I guess that's good. But she's like working hard and there's sweat coming out of her ears, you know, and stuff like that. That's bad, right? You don't want to be frustrated. You don't want to be like, I don't know what's going on. You want to be this one, right? You want to be working hard and trying things. Look at the size of this book. My Lord, how big is this book? That was a giant book. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what the hell that is, but yeah, you want to be here. You want to be, you want to be working hard. You want to be, you know, thinking about things and trying things. And, but if you ever get stuck, ask for help. That's what the help center is for. Okay. You want to be this guy. You want to be filling blackboards with equations and things like that. You don't want to be the dog, right? Like everyone's, everyone feels like the dog sometimes. Trust me. Trust me. We've all, we've all been there. I took a graduate level theory class and I was the dog. I was not used to being the dog, but I was the dog. I'm like, this guy's talking and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. I'm not used to this feeling, you know? And so I, I got help from my friend. And so every Wednesday night, I'd go over to Jamin's, Jameson's place and he would tutor me. And the best advice he gave me was, you don't need to take this class. And I'm like, what? He's like, it's not required for you. I'm like, oh, and I dropped it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, learning through failure is good. Okay. Make an appointment on office hours, message me on Discord. Uh, just get used to asking for help. All, my, all the top students that I've had, um, Probably set, eh, not all of them, but like 75% of them get into the habit of like, could you clarify this for me? How would you, you know, it just, just message me. I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm not, not mean, you know, or if you're terrified to ask me a question, cause then you'll reveal, you don't know the material that I'm going to teach. Cause I know you don't know it cause you're in this class, but it's fine. If you're embarrassed then ask the key in, instead, it's fine. Either way, just get help. Okay. So, uh, very important. If you've never had me before, this is going to be new to you and it might be scary to you. So, so pay attention. We use a Unix server. It's a GNU slash Linux server that is based out of Fremont, California. It's over in the Southeast corner of the Bay area. And it is a shared server that all of the students use. Please don't hack it or abuse it in any way. It's my own machine. I pay for it. Okay. So. What you're going to do is you're going to connect to the server and you're going to do your homework on the server. So I use putty. Putty is a secure shell client, SSH, a secure shell client. If uh, you have a Macintosh, uh, I can't help you. I don't use Macs anymore. Um, 
if you use Windows, I recommend Putty. It's kind of a global standard. Uh, the download is, uh, you just Google Putty download and it'll take you to it. Uh, so when you connect to the server for the first time, it's going to ask you for, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like something out of like a 1970s science fiction movie. And you're going to type in your username. Your username is going to be your last name, underscore, whatever your student ID is. And then uh, for the password, see how nothing's appearing on the screen? It does not echo any keys for the password. Okay, so your password is just your username. So again, it's going to be Kearney underscore. I don't even know what I typed. I just whacked random keys. Uh, it's like Kearney underscore four three two four two three two three. It's not actually my username. Permission denied. It's not my username. But that's what you're going to type in. Okay, so you're going to type in your last name, underscore, student ID. Um, if you have like an apostrophe in your last name, or if you have a space or a hyphen, uh, message me on Discord because um, those things aren't allowed in, in usernames. So uh, message me and I'll, I'll tell you if there's any confusion on it. And, and if you added the class, you'll probably need to message me also because you're not in the, in the system yet. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to type in your username and password, and then it'll log you in, and then it'll immediately... It will immediately ask you to change your password. And when you change your password, you type in your current password first. Your current password is Kearney underscore whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you type in the new password that you want. And then you type in the new password that you want. So once you do that, it closes the screen. It logs you out. You log back in. You type in your username again. You type in your new password. And you're good to go. And what you're going to see when you do that, when you log in properly, is this. So welcome to 1970. <laughs> All the cool kids use uh, Unix these days. So uh, it, I actually greatly prefer developing on Unix than I do on Windows. Windows uh, irritates me. Uh, Linux, GNU slash Linux, Unix, whatever you want to call it, is the place to be. And college is the place to learn it. So if you've never used Linux before, uh, there is a tutorial right here. You can copy that and paste it into your web browser, go through the first three chapters. Like, trust me on this. Like every semester I have students that are like, oh, it's not, it's not going to be on the midterm. So I'm not, no, trust me, do it. It's on here too. Like first three chapters. It will take you 20, 30 minutes. It's not long and you'll know how to use Unix. And knowing how to use Unix is worth money. It's actually $5,000 pay differential, something like that. Uh, if you don't, then you're going to be kind of, handicap the whole semester, but I will show you the basics here. Okay, so the basics <clears throat> of Unix, and these are pinned on the Discord channel as well. LS will show you all the files and folders in the current directory. So you can see I've got this folder here and this folder here. I've got an executable here and an executable here, and I've got some text files. I don't even know what the hell these things are. Vim, erd, erd, February, what the hell is that? Let's delete that. Okay, so anyhow, so ls shows the files and folders and executables in your current directory. If you want to cd into a directory, for example, um, all of you will have one directory in your folder right now, which is called fractions, because you're doing fractions, like my daughter. Uh, in order to cd into that directory, in order to change directories into that directory, you type cd fractions. And if you hit tab, I don't know if you saw that, if you hit tab, frac. You can hit tab and it fills in the, the file name for you. Really important. I mean, it's not, I mean, you can type the whole thing out, but why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like tab completion is really important. So to tab complete something, like if you want to view a file, the command is called vim. Okay. Vim is our text editor that we use here. And let's say I want to view the readme file. The readme, the readme file has all of the instructions for the homework. You just type the first couple letters and hit tab, boom. Hit return, there's the homework sign. Okay. It's, uh, it's based on the oldest known mathematician in history. He lived 3,800 years ago, or th uh, let's see. He lived 3,600, something like that, 3,600 years ago. And he wrote a mathematical textbook based on math puzzles from 3,800 years ago. So he was actually copying from a 200-year-old scroll 
and he made up math puzzles and things like that. It's really cool. And they're really hard. Like, it's amazing that the ancient Egyptians were solving these things for fun. And I'm like, I don't know how the hell to solve that. You know, like they had a slope and um, change over time and volume and fractions. And so the fraction puzzles that the Egyptians liked uh, were called decomposing fractions. And so they would take a fraction like 297ths and express it as a series of fractions uh, with one in the numerator. So 297ths is the same thing as 156th plus 1 679ths plus 1 776th. And this guy, Amos, figured this out by hand, no computer. Like, I don't know how the hell he did it. But yeah, you add those three things together, you get one, you get 2 over 97. And uh, 2 over 101 is, is that godly thing there. He figured all that out by hand. He has a whole chart. He has a whole chart of these things. Uh, it's honestly amazing. Honestly amazing. So um, you're going to write a program to do that. He didn't have a program. He did it by hand. It's pretty amazing. So if you want to, if you want to read more about those puzzles and things like that, it's uh, in that Wikipedia link right there. Anyway, so two thirds is the same thing as one half plus one sixth, right? Because one half is three sixth, and one sixth plus three sixth is four sixth. Four sixth is, is the same as two thirds, right? Do you guys see how that works? So if the user types in two thirds, then you're going to output one half plus one sixth. That's the homework set. Just fractions. You're going to have to know how to reduce things and subtract fractions, basically. That's that's the assignment. If you haven't done fractions in a while, um, you know. It's like my daughter, it's face down on the table. <laughs> Trust me, when I, I wrote this myself, I was uh, I was um, doing this over winter break. I came across this puzzle, and like it, it hurt my brain a little bit. I was like, "All right, how the hell do I solve that?" And I didn't, I didn't immediately see an answer to it. Right? I was like, "It seems like there's an infinite number of possibilities." Right? Like, you know, like, how do you how do you find it? You know, but the the problem said. Start with one half. If one half is smaller than the number, like one half is smaller than two thirds, print out one half and subtract one half from the number. And you just keep doing that until zero is left. Check one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth. Oh, one sixth equals one sixth. Subtract it out, print one sixth, there's zero left, you're done. And that's the algorithm. And so you just check every fraction. And if that fraction that you're checking is smaller than the target number, you subtract it out, you print it to the screen, subtract it out, and repeat until there's nothing left. That's it. That's the algorithm. And once I realized that, I'm like, okay, now I have to remember how to do fraction subtraction. Okay, so there's like uh, least common multiple or greatest common divisor. Uh, what the hell, you know? And, and you know, I had to uh, dust the cobwebs off. But you know, I did it. I did it. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's your homework assignment. So. Uh, Vim is our text editor. Uh, once you've taken a look at the README file, you can scroll down and read all the details on it. I've got examples of like, you know, 54 over 1099. Yeah. Once you want to quit out, Shift ZZ. Hold down Shift key, hit ZZ. And that Shift ZZ looks like that. Saves and quits out of Vim. Okay. And then you can edit the main.cc. That's where you're going to be doing your coding. All of your coding must take place in main.cc. If you create another file called rind.cc or main2.cc, it will not be collected. It will not be graded. Main.cc is where the action is at. Main.cc, main.cc, that's the file you got to edit. And if you make a header file, have main.cc include the header file. It'll be fine. My code collects all of your CC files and header files, but it compiles that one. That's where you put your solution. Whatever else you have doesn't get counted, doesn't get graded. Okay. So here's what you're going to be doing for homework. You're going to be doing this in a loop. First thing you're going to do is you're going to edit main.cc. And you'll notice that there are two bugs in this code already. Uh, the first bug is apparently around here somewhere. I don't know. It's a very difficult bug to find. If you haven't done C++ in a while, you might not. If you've been doing Python, Python semicolons are optimal, right? But uh, in C++, if you've been doing C++, you should probably recognize that there's a missing semicolon there, right? Put it in. Um, what I'm going to be doing this semester, and this isn't a coincidence, like 
um, I'm, I'm actually going to be doing more debugging with you guys because I feel like I was a little light on that last semester and I feel like students debugging skills weren't as developed as I wanted them to be. So I'm going to be doing things like this where there's um, typos. I don't know if you guys can see there's a typo somewhere in here. It's a mystery. I'm not going to tell you. Um, and, and bugs and things like that, because I want you to get competent at finding bugs, fixing bugs, and ensuring correctness. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so this is your starter code, write the code. And uh, once you're uh, save and quit, then you're going to compile the code by typing compile main.cc. And it's not going to compile because it's missing a semicolon. And it will tell you compile is a shell script I wrote. And it will actually print out a really nice error message because error messages in the C++ compiler suck. And so I wrote, uh, along with some students, a shell script that will actually print nice paragraphs. And it'll say, you've entered a, a line without a semicolon. It, put, it, put it right there, you know. And so type Q to quit, and then you can go to fix it. So I recommend compiling your code with compile. You don't have to. If you'd like, you can just compile it directly with uh, G++. That's fine as well. It also still won't compile because it is missing a semicolon. But I recommend that you compile your code with uh, compile. And then once your code is running, you're going to type it out out it out out to run it. And then you're going to run it. And if you find a bug, then you edit it again, compile it again, run it again, you know, edit it again, compile it again, run it again. And you're going to do that in a loop. Edit it, compile it, run it, edit it, compile it, run it, edit it, compile it, run it until you are happy that your code is correct. And once, you're, once you think your code is correct, like it seems to be working, then you see if your code's correct. So on the server, and again, all of these commands are on Discord, I pinned them. There's a command called input tester. An input tester will check to see if your code's correct. Right now, you don't have an a dot out because it's not compiling. It out, out, it out, out is the name of an executable in, in Unix. If you don't give it a name, it's just called it out, out for historical reasons. So if you don't have, if your code's not compiling, it'll say that. But let me show you what it'll look like if uh, you do fractions that reference. Here's my code. And so uh, if I were to run the code, you can see, let's see, uh, five sixths is the same as one half plus one third. Is that right? Three six plus two six is five six. Yeah. Okay. So there's a code. So it looks like it's working right. And so if I want to see if it works right, I run input tester. Hit return. Test pass, test pass, test pass, test pass. Cool. Done. If you pass all of your test cases, you are good to go. You're 10 out of 10. You have aced the assignment. This assignment's only worth five points because it's honestly, it's kind of easy. It, it seems hard. It seems really hard until you kind of, you know. Okay, I just need to reduce a fraction and fraction subtraction. That's it. It's just takes a little time to get the gears working. Um, but if you fail one of the test cases, like let's say test three fails, then this is actually a uh, text file. You can actually open this up. And so in PuTTY, if you select something, it will be copied to the clipboard. And so I just select it. Then I go Vim, right click, and then that's the input. So two one hundred and eleventh is the input. And if you want to see what the output should be for that, you just copy the output, the corresponding output file. Then right click pastes, and there you go. The output should be one fifty sixth and one six thousand two hundred sixteenth. Yep, that's the output. So if you get something different, it'll it'll print on the screen there, right? So if I uh, Come up here into the your, your directory and let's just fix that semicolon. I'll, I'll give you guys this one. I'll give you that one. There you go. And let's compile it. Let's run it. You'll notice that it doesn't actually do anything. It just prints giving the numerator and denominator. Well, let's run the input tester. Let's see what the input tester has to say. So the input tester says this. Um, a left arrow is my code. No, left arrow is your code. Sorry, your code. So this is what your code is saying. Your code is printing, please enter the denumerator. And my code says, please enter the denominator. So you have to examine that line and examine that line and figure out what's different. I'm not going to tell you what the problem is, but you should be able to figure it out. Okay. You will notice, though, the please enter the numerator was not printed. And that's because anything that is the same gets ignored. 
this only shows you the differences between your code and my code. So this is your code. My code is printing, please enter the denominator spelled correctly, followed by the fractions. Okay. And then you can go on to the next test and the next test. You'll notice the same problem keeps cropping up on every test case. So you can hit control C to cancel out of that once you figure out there's something wrong. And then fix the fix the typo and carry on with your life. Okay, put the typo back. Yeah, and at the end of the day, when you are all done, it's gonna look input tester. It's just gonna look like this. It's a good feeling. Done. Peace out. Do you have to turn in your assignment? No. On the deadline, my code will reach into your directory, grab main.cc, pull it out, and, it, and any other files in there, pulls it out, compiles it, and runs it. And then it does this, input tests it. And you get a number of points equal to the number of test cases you pass. So in this case, there's 10 test case passes, 10 test cases passed, you get 10 points. Or because it's a five point assignment, you get five points. So each test case in this case would be half. Okay, so very straightforward. If your code doesn't compile, you get a zero. It's like in real life. Nobody cares. <laughs> if you work for Microsoft, you can't get your code to compile. It, it, that's not, you, you can't ship that, right? You can't, there's nothing you can do with a co code that doesn't compile. So um, you want to, you want to get your code up and running. You want to do the easy, some of these test cases are pretty easy to pass. And so, you know, get, get the easy points real fast, right? 12, 12 fourths is three, right? It's pretty easy. So pick, pick the easy ones off real fast and then work on the harder ones. There's a couple in here that are tricky. I'll tell you that. There's a couple in here that are tricky. Okay, so that is the server and uh, a CD to change directories, LS to show what's in the current directory, Vim to edit a text file. So if you want to see what my solution looks like, I'll show you. There's my solution. <laughs> I'm not going to show you what's in the header file. The header file does all the hard work, um, but my main is actually very small. Please enter the numerator, the denominator. It makes a fraction out of it. I made a fraction class. So I made a fraction class that has a numerator and a denominator. And so I made a make fraction function that makes fraction. And then uh, I made a member function on it called decompose that pulls the biggest term out of the fraction. And so if it's five six, it'll pull out the one half and then it'll reduce itself down to one third. And the next time you call decompose, it pulls out one third. There's zero remaining. And so what this code says, it prints out a curly boy and the first term. And then it says, while there's any uh, fractions remaining, it prints out a comma, a space, and it pulls out another one. And we'll just keep doing that until the value is zero, basically. And when the value is zero, it prints out the closed curly boy and it's done. So three lines of code. <laughs> the fraction.h, of course, word count fraction.h is 105 lines of code. So uh, <laughs> my first my first solution to it, my first solution, I solved it um, uh, CSI 40 style. It's 54 lines of code. But um, I then solved it again using C++ classes. And I, I went way overboard. I made it able to add the fractions and subtract the fractions. and multiply the fractions and reduce the fraction. I added all these things that I don't, I don't know if I really needed, but it seemed like fun at the time. So I, I wrote probably twice as much code to make this fraction class so that main two is like that big. Yep. And then when you want to log off the server, you just type log off, log out, sorry, or control D. I just hit control D. Do that survey or do that survey. Surrey. Do that. Do the Surrey URL. Click on the tutorial there. It's good. It's good. It's easy. Half an hour of your life. It'll make your life a lot better. Okay. So, uh, CSI 40 review. So one of the, one of the big challenges in this class is that a lot of people have forgotten their CSI 40 stuff. I have students taking it. I haven't taken it in a year in three years, a uh, semester ago, but didn't learn it uh, well enough. So, this week, this moment in time, when people enter 41 and they're not 
maybe maybe they have some gaps in their knowledge. It's a really crucial time. Uh, CSI 41 has a really high attrition rate and it has a high attrition rate because you can pass CSI 40 with a C without necessarily um, being able to do all these things, right? And so if you don't know how to do like a for loop, you're in for a bad time in this class. I'm going to tell you that. Like if you don't know how to do a function, you're in for a bad time because it's all functions and for loops and like you can't have any gaps in your CSI 40 knowledge at all, at all. Uh, pointers maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll do lots of stuff with pointers in this class. Don't worry about pointers from last class. And we only did a little bit with classes in 40. Um, but you gotta you gotta know your variables, you gotta know how to do algebra, you gotta know how to write if and else if statements. Like pretty good. So what I did differently this year is I put up a comprehensive assessment exam. It's a it's a competency exam. It counts, it's part of your 20% of your grade. And it is uh, four questions, it's not it's not long. And it's kind of a comprehensive test of all these things to see where you at with CSI 40. And good news, if you do badly on it, you're probably going to get a tutor partnered with you. So I've got a bunch of volunteers that have agreed to put in five hours of tutoring. Five hours is a lot of time. Doesn't seem like a lot of time. It's a lot of time. And they will go th through with you all the stuff from CSI 40. And they will have you write code. And when you get stuck, they'll help you. And then they'll have you write code. And the goal being to pave over any of the gaps in your knowledge and to get you writing code and writing code and writing code and writing code and to build that fluency to at least the level you need to be for this class, right? Write a function, write a vector, right? Search a vector for an element, you know? And so that's really nice. And be sure you like, uh, you know, clap emoji for them when you see them because they're, they're not getting paid for this, you know? They're just volunteering. But they're helping out because they've all been here. Everybody's taken CSI 41. And everyone's had smoke coming out of their ears at some point. We've all been there. And so there are, I got like, I don't know, six or eight people that are volunteering to help you guys. And if you get 100% on the competency exam, then you're good to go and, you know, don't worry about it. So the uh, that programming assignment is due on Friday at noon. So you've got four days to work on it, uh, which is enough time. It's, it, it's, again, it seems hard until you just like sit down with a piece of paper and like figure out how fractions work. <laughs> it's, it's really all it is. Don't use doubles. Don't use doubles. Don't use floats. Just numerator, denominator, integer. Yeah, or some sort of integer. I will say no more about that. Some sort of integer. Um, don't use doubles. Don't use floats. But, you know, just sit down with a piece of paper. Figure it out. And you can do it. And you've got a partner, too. So it's a partnered assignment. And the canvas, if you guys go to the... 41 people tab go to the people tab you can see who your partner is so fractions groups as you can see there are partners and so just message them on canvas message them on discord sub a time this is technically not really a partnered assignment but it is um so that means you can copy from each other and, and that's something i uh, i said earlier that i didn't say here i've got a cheat detection program um it'll run every time code is graded and it will look for similar code. And so if you copy and paste code from somebody else, it'll be picked up. And that's actually one of the reasons why I'm doing this as a partner assignment, because I want to see if the cheat detection works, right? So if Wolf and Zalas turn in similar code, it's like, cool, caught it. You know, it's not bad. Like it's a partner assignment. You can work, you can copy everything. It's fine. It's fine. It's not cheating with your partners. But if you copy and paste on an individual assignment, that's cheating. And so there, so, so where, where do you draw the line? And this is something that students have trouble with sometimes. And, and the, the answer is you should get help and you should talk to your friends and be like, Hey, how, you know, how do I, how do I do something? And they'll tell you, but it should be in English, right? I, I, I did this by sorting it first, then deleting the last element. Ah, I see, you know, but if you ever find yourself hitting copy and paste, that's cheating. That's the bright line. Never find yourself copying from somebody else on an individual assignment on a partner assignment. You can copy from your partner. That's the exception, right? Don't copy from another group just from your partner's fine. And don't copy from stack overflow. Maybe one line of code. Like if they're like, this is how you sort something you can copy and paste. That's fine. But like, if you, if you ever find yourself copying and pasting a giant block of code, somebody else is probably going to copy and paste that same giant block of code and you're going to get flagged for cheating. You're going to get a zero on the assignment. And you're going to be very unhappy. Okay. 
happens every semester. It bothers me. I, I, I want students to do it themselves. I don't want them to copy it. But you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm looking it up how to do it. And, and so the, the bright line is don't control C, control V, or in putty, right click, you know, paste. Yep. And that's cheating. So for this assignment, though, it's partnered. So copy as much as you want off your partner. Contact them, talk to them on Discord. If you want, you, the two of you could just do it separately and just at the end of the day, just talk about it. It's up to you, however you want to do it. Like I said, we're not doing GitHub or anything like that for this assignment. You just got, you got a buddy, you got a friend that'll, that'll help you out. Maybe if you can find them, if they're not AFK. Unfortunately, online, there's no way of telling when people uh, drop off the face of the earth. So uh, it's just one of the realities of online learning and, you know, CLV. So they'll probably get dropped from the class and who knows. Okay. So bright line, don't copy and paste code from other people except for your partner. So. And we're going to be doing more debugging this semester. Uh, I feel like I went too light on debugging last semester. So we're going to do more debugging this semester. It's a really good skill to have. That's it. So welcome to the class. It's a good class. We got good people. We got um, a good PA. Nick has, uh, I've known him for uh, three semesters now or something like that. He's a really good guy. He's a smart guy. Um, he's a good TA. We got Nate doing a project to help you guys out. We've got six or eight volunteers to help you guys out. So. Um, you got, all you got to do is ask for help. That's it. If there's any takeaway from this lecture. It's like, if you get stuck, just ask for help. That's it. Don't go on Shag. Don't go on Course Hero. Last semester, I had a student uh, ask, like, an innocent question. Like, he's just like, hey, what does this mean on Shag? And the Shag guy solved the entire homework for him. So it was cheating at that point. And he turned it in, of course, which made it even more cheating. And he had his username on the screenshot on Shag. So it's like, all right. I, you cheated, you know, and then he dropped out. And I never saw him or her again. And it was just like, why did you ask on Chegg? It was just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know even what the question is now, but it was like, you know, you just had asked, like, how do I, I don't know, capitalize a string or something? Just ask it on the help center, right? Like, it, it was a very innocuous question. Like, what does this mean? You know, just ask on the help center or, or message me or mess, message the PA. You know, it's, it, like there was absolutely no reason for this guy to go on to check for it. You know, and, and there shouldn't be. You know, and, that, and that's a very bright line for me. Don't ever use check. Don't ever use course hero. We have ample, ample help available for you guys in this class. Yeah. So it will make me sad and disappointed if I see check answers on here. And the cheat detection system is pretty good too. But who knows? Maybe, maybe not. All right, so that is the first class. Um, do the comprehensive exam. Uh, there's no daily quiz today. The comprehensive exam takes the place of that. Um, say something, ask a question on the help center. Say hi. No, ask a question. There, 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 you gotta have some question. You gotta have some question. Just ask a question. And you'll get a point. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. All right, peace out.